Well, it happened. It finally happened. And I don't think anyone saw it going down like this. Michelle Terrier is out, and Claude Julien is in. This is Hockey Inside Out. I'm Adam Susser, and I'd like to welcome you to this week's show. I'm here today with Pat Hickey from the Montreal Gazette, Chris Nyland, and Big George Larac. Joining us once again here in studio, here are today's topics. Number one, are you surprised the Canadians fired Michelle Therrien? Number two, what does Claude Julien bring to the team? Number three, what are the main differences between Therrien and Julien? Number four is our viewer question of the week, which asks if it's time to let Carey Price go and call up Charles Lindgren from the Ice Caps. And number five, if the Canadians do not add a scoring threat by the trade deadline, do you think they'll miss the playoffs? Let's begin. On Tuesday, Marc Bergevin made a move that shocked Montreal and the hockey world when he announced that he fired head coach Michel Therrien and replaced him with recently fired Bruins head coach Claude Julien. What's shocking is not so much that Therrien was fired, but that he was fired now. The team has been struggling lately, winning only six out of their last 18 games, but they're still in first place in the Atlantic. Were you surprised that the Canadians fired Michel Therrien at this point in the season? I was a little bit surprised because I thought he might get um, the next three or four games after the break to see if they could bounce out of this little slump they're in. And, um, you know, I think uh, uh, Bergevin just figured at this point, uh, being down in Boston, probably haven't talked to Neely uh, about the availability of uh, Julian. He thought this would be the best time. So I was a little surprised. But if they weren't going to win in the next three or four games afterwards, I thought he was going anyway. Actually, uh, for me, I wasn't surprised. After the win we had in Phoenix, we were lucky to play Phoenix because I think any other team in the NHL would have lost. You look at the way the team uh, responded against St. Louis, wasn't as bad, but you lost at home. But losing, uh, losing the way they did against Boston after, that was it. That sealed the deal for, that sealed the deal for him. And when you look at the whole thing, the team, they had no choice. They needed a new, new air, new atmosphere. They needed something totally different because a, a, a trade wouldn't have changed anything. You, you, you bring somebody else in that environment, this poison environment, the team wouldn't start winning. They needed to do a coaching change. There's a lot of speculation, the fact that they were friends with, with Mark Bergevin would have done it, but I think it came from the owners. The owners had no choice. The, after a while, the coach, when they talk to the players after a while and, and the message doesn't go through, uh, I didn't see guys fighting and play for him that last game. They weren't responding anymore. Yeah. They stopped responding to him. I don't think guys hated Michel Therrien. I just think they stopped listening to him. They stopped responding to the message he was sending. So you think he just lost the room pretty much, in other words? They had no choice. I think yeah. uh, if you want to go back to a couple scenarios of what have happened with Carey Price. That game uh, that uh, we talked about it so many times, that 10 goals, you let Montayo in. Price wanted to step in for him. Terry Ann said, no, you don't embarrass another goalie when your leader is Carey Price. Carey Price is like, he, Montayo is as important as me. When that happened, the relationship between Carey Price and the coach wasn't good because, uh, you know, Montayo was really popular in the room. And, and when you look at that, the way that Michel was dealing with the goalies this year wasn't good. We've heard in the past, he had the same problem. In Pittsburgh, he got fired because of that. Same reason with Flurry. He, he yelled at Flurry in the room in front of everybody, make Flurry cry. Flurry, best friend with Crosby. Crosby went to Jim, uh, Jim's uh, office. It was done. Flurry Michelle cried? Was yes, he, he did. He cries? And then they won the cup. There's no crying in hockey. Uh, everybody oh, cries oh, sometimes, Oh, tenders do cry. You know, there was, <laughs> hey, remember? crying in hockey. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, you know, I was a little surprised that they, they did it when they did. But, you know, I think that the availability of Julian changed everything. I, I think if Julian was not available, Terry might still be in there. It would be interesting to see when they started talking to the Bruins, though, on Sunday. Was it before the game or after they lost 4 nothing? It was before the game. Then we know that you know, he was definitely on his way out. Um, there was also some talk to Ed that Gerard Gallant was the backup plan. I don't believe that for a minute. You've, no way you could bring an English coach in here. Uh, this works out well for everybody. The Bruins are off the hook for the $6 million they owe Claude Julian. Julian gets a raise, and he's in a much better situation as far as he's concerned. Actually, there's two things for this. The first thing is it shows a lot of, a lot of respect, lack of respect towards Terrian because, yes, they talked to, to Claude Julian on Sunday, but Michelle doesn't know until Monday. So 
why don't you tell the coach you don't want him back if you're going to start talking to other coaches? Because if Claude Gillian would have said no and went to Vegas, what do you do? You, you keep Terry and he doesn't know about this meeting? Well, yeah. So this shows a lack of respect and they're friends. And the second how, thing how too How can you keep Terry and tell him, hey, I just want to let you know I'm talking to other coaches. Lack of respect. But, you know, you may or may not and stick talking around. Up, talking about lack of respect. Who does that? Yes. Is that, is that, does that happen though? Do you think he would say that? Well, no. They and, don't do that. If you're going to you break know, up with your girlfriend, you don't say, I'm thinking of breaking up with you, but I may not. I'm talking the, to other girls. Well, I think he had to make sure when he talked to Neely first that they would let him out of the contract so he could speak with him. But at that moment, That's a different, I don't, at that moment I, I, I tell don't, Michelle. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. See, I don't think they talked to Julian until Monday. No, I don't, no, I don't, they yeah. talk, no, they talked to him on Sunday. It was confirmed. Really? Yeah. What, what are some of the things that Claude Julian brings to the team? Well, I honestly, Claude Julian, what's the difference between Julian yeah. and Tarian? Uh, I think maybe Tarian got a little more hair on his head. Um, so he's just a balder Tarian, that's what you're saying? I, I, I think they're very similar in their systems. Uh, personalities both are a little different. Yeah, personalities are a little different, but um, system-wise, I think they're pretty much the same. I think one area the Canadians are really going to improve under this coach is the penalty killing, and they desperately need it. Boston's number two in the league, and it ain't because uh, they're a new coach. It's because of Claude Julian. The difference is two, two Stanley Cup final, one Stanley Cup. The experience, the World Cup, where he had a great relationship with Mark Benjamin. Experience, respect. The fact that Matt Babcock talked about he's one of the best coaches in the NHL. Matt Babcock is maybe the best, but Julian is regarded as one of the top five in, like, coach in the NHL. So because of all this energy and all that stuff, the way he's regarded around the league, it brings new energy and new ideas to a team that needed something different. In terms of coaching style, I agree a bit with Chris. The fact that if you look at the system, the way Michel was, you know, they're both defensive guys. But And you look at a team that rely a lot on Carey Price. Carey Price wasn't himself lately, and that's why the team were losing. But in the beginning of the season, Michel, we were putting him in the uh, in a nomination for Jack Adams. Same coach that was there. Carey start not playing well, and other things going down the drain, but it's still in the first place. I think one of the things you have to, uh, to to explain though is that you know when they talk about these guys both being defensive coaches, but people seem to think that that means boring hockey. If you look at their records over the years, Julian for two years in a row the Bruins led the NHL in goals scored and goals against, uh, and the Canadians the beginning of last year before Price got hurt. And the beginning of this year, until things started going south in the beginning of January, the Canadians again were one of the most high, one of the highest scoring teams in the NHL. So it doesn't necessarily translate. What you want to be is you want to be defensively responsible, responsible, but use that forecheck and use the defensive tools that you have to create offense. And yeah. uh, I, I think the systems are going to be very similar. I hope people understand though that that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a boring team. George, what do you think are the main differences between uh, Claude Julien and Michel Therrien? I think the biggest uh, is, first of all, is just the era that he brings in, the relationship he's going to have with the players is going to be better because they, he's, like, people are going to look at him a different way. They're going to have a lot of respect for him because he's won before. Often we say the difference it, it means to a player to play for the coach that won and has that reputation. Um, guys are going to want to impress him. They're going to want to play for him. They're going to want to... Every time there's a new coach, there's a new excitement that comes in. And people, they're excited to play for him and to see what he's going to bring to the table. And just with that new energy, even if the system was the same, just because it's him and he's won before and he comes from, and he did great things with Boston. Don't forget that Sagan, Luchik, all those guys were gone. And Claude Julien was winning with the team that had no one. So people looking at that big revolvery team, what they've done in the past, I think that just for that, his presence is going gonna, is gonna to be tremendous for the, for the team. But you know what I'm most surprised about is we're talking about a lot of things, but what is the Boston Bruins are doing to give permission to the Canadians to get Cole Julien this year? That this season owner, is not even done. That it's owner it's always, it's wants always, to get the money off yes, the books. But Bottom still, line. Yes, He's but still, a businessman. That's you, it. He doesn't is, care. He doesn't th- care. Yeah, but this is a team that is in your own division. Yeah, you he l- doesn't you, care. You, you let him le- next year. It's okay. He comes in. The season yeah. starts. In the middle of the season, you're battling against the Canadians for a spot in the playoff. And the Boston says, yeah, give one of the best coaches in the NHL to your biggest revolvery team this the, year. The owner because doesn't care. You, you know what's going to happen? Montreal is going to make the playoff. But if Boston doesn't make the playoff, yeah. man, that could be the GM's decision to let him go there to save a bit of money. 
this is insane. I don't and you know. know, and you it, know who's it's signing? the owner's decision. And you, and, and you know I don't funny? think it's the president or the GM. You, it's, you, the, it's, it's the owner. Charlie, Charlie Jacobs wanted the. Yeah. He wanted to get that his dad's money off the table. The other thing too, though, is you don't you don't refuse permission to do this. I mean, because no, if you do it, then somebody else is going to do it no, to you, no, but George. You, but you let him talk. But what I'm saying is that usually the way it works, interim happened because Muller would have finished the season. Julian coach next year. But to the, yeah. you, in the middle of the season like this, a week later, before he was into the Bruins office, like sitting there, a week later, Canadian's office, and you're battling against that team to make the playoff. If they don't make the playoff, everybody's going to look at this and say, "Yes, why don't? Why did you wait at least they're, in the summer to, for a full adjustment?" They're saying it now, but if you if you, teams are looking for it, you know, it's the same thing as RFAs. Nobody nobody gives offer sheets then because then you get a reputation for being a difficult team to deal with, and uh, so you have to give them permission. It, it's just it's just a courtesy. It's part of but the there, game. There's a difference between giving permission and let him come this year in. Like you let finish the year, but you give permission, yeah. but he coach next year, right? But also, I know that yeah. it, they took into consideration the fact that Montreal wasn't playing Boston again yeah. because of yeah. the disadvantage for Boston. Right. There's no more game against each other, but still, it's pretty crazy that the same division rival it, you let for this year say, okay, you can go yeah. straight coach that team, and we'll see who makes the playoff. Yeah. Okay, at this point in the show, it's time for our HAO viewer question of the week. This week's question comes to us from Ross McDuff from Georgetown, Ontario, who writes, Carey Price has had a bad regular season. Is it time to let Price go and bring up Charlie Lindgren from the St. John's Ice Caps? Don Cherry said Lindgren is ready for the NHL. Well, if Don Cherry said that, what do you think? I think it would be a big mistake. I mean, Carey Price... I'm not sure what the problem is, but year in and year out, Carey Price has been the team. He's been the guy that's carried this team. Uh, I don't think he's hurt because I think if he was hurt, they would have shut him down. I think he, his mind is not there. He's not focused. Uh, hopefully the coaching change will change that around. But uh, Charlie Lindgren, Charlie Lindgren's a good goaltender, but he's not ready yet. It's way too early to do this. You look at Mike Condon last year coming from college hockey. Uh, you, we, we had no choice to put, live him pretty much all year in the net because Price was hurt, and we burnt him because he wasn't used to play that many games. Not so time to let, experiment. Yes, yeah, so let him finish his experiment in the AHL. He's doing really good. Carol Price, let's just see what this coaching change is going to do for the energy to the team and to him because things could well change for him. Finish strong, to, uh, finish strong the season, and people could be like, yeah, we got the prize back, but it's too early to respond to that question. So apparently you have a question for me. Yes. Because of the coaching change, yeah. because we know that uh, Michel Therrien is the one that got PK out of the Montreal. Yeah. How happy would you be that PK comes back now because <laughs> Michel is gone, your favorite player? PK is not coming back. There's oh, no way. I don't think that's how PK that works. got himself <laughs> traded from this town. It doesn't matter what coach was here last year. Uh, it doesn't matter if Julian is here. Uh, if Julian was here last year, PK would have been traded from this hockey team anyway. I, I you know why? Because he was too much of a distraction. Had nothing to do with the hockey. Distraction. I saw a t-shirt of Nashville of <laughs> Piquet in your bedroom. So oh, you love Piquet. He's your favorite player. He's your favorite yeah, player. I, I have this picture in my room signed right above my bed. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the day. Uh, if the Canadians do not add a scoring threat by the trade deadline, do you think the Habs will miss the playoffs? I don't think they'll miss the playoff. They're going to make the playoff because they're their schedule at, towards the till the end of the season is favorable easy, for them. Yep. It's easy, 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 much easier schedule. But again, without more scoring punch, even with uh, Claude Julien there, they're not going to make that deep. It's important to make a trade too, but for the same reason that you're changing the coach, is to get a change to get people, get the players' attention, get the fans' attention a little bit. Uh, you know, and if you if you make a trade, then all of a sudden the players get a little more focused. And leading up to the trading deadline, I think guys are a little more focused and they want to stay here. Uh, uh, there might be some guys who want to leave. Most but educated that, guess, who do, you, if, who do you think they'd get rid of? Who do you think they'd pick up, if you had to guess? I, I, I couldn't guess. I know players, some of the players that they might like to get rid of contracts. Uh, yeah. But those are the same players that aren't going to be very attractive to other teams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to Make some sacrifices. That's something that the general manager has been unwilling to do. One of the even, core players. You've got to trade yeah, a core yeah, player you gotta, to get you gotta, some. Uh, trade a core player or get rid of the first round of draft choice. Trade the first round of draft choice. This is a lousy draft. 
So, all we hear is Duchesne. This team yeah. has to get bigger up the middle. They have to get, he's small. Yeah, he, he can score points and all that. He's not a right They have to player. get bigger up the middle. And to get him right now is going to take Galchenyuk, a first-round pick, and Sergachev. That's or, or, what or that guy five, in Colorado top, wants. Or top no, four defenseman yeah, right now. Yeah. Yeah. But Colorado is looking for, Too much. for a future defenseman. Yeah. They want Sergachev. But yeah. again, Duchesne has concussion problems. He's a small player. Yeah. They need to be bigger. Uh, we're known as a small team, and you look at Washington, you look at L.A., Columbus, all those big teams that played against us, even Ottawa, that are abusing us uh, physically. Yeah. So, But there's not guys in the market right now that are big that could help us. That's why they're in a tough position, because who are you going to get? Moving Landis forward. Kog is the only guy, but he's not a center. Moving forward, uh, they've kind of built from within and got big from within. McCarron someday will be a center here. Deno has surprised a lot of people. You know, He's you, a good sized kid. You know what McCarron is? And Gelchenyuk. McCarron is like if you had a ladder and you put the, the like the body of a Ferrari on it. Like he has the physical that to say, okay, it raised the, the average of the height and the the weight, but he, he can't stand up. He's always on the on, on his ass. He doesn't bring any respect. He's not physical. He's not mean. You know, like, he's, because of that, he doesn't bring I don't enough agree with you. I, 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 I would say he's physical. I would, I would, I would say he's physical. Yes, yeah. I would say he's mean. He's fought and stood mean. up for his team. He does well, get mean. He's, he's dropped his gloves and fought guys for this team where other guys haven't. Every no one's he, done it since every, Press left. He's every, the only one. Every time he drops his glove at 6'5", 240, I'm afraid Yeah, he does him. all right. Yeah. I'm, all right? I, I'm a little... Oh, no, I'd he's be... He's done all right. Uh, I, I think he's done George, okay. George, he, he yeah, has fought like you, but he can play the game. You can fight. He could play. <laughs> he could play. Yeah, he's not a bad player for a young kid. He should be a winger. You're not a center. They're doing a mistake. They're, they're trying to. They're center. trying to get That's him in mistake. as a center. They're burning him out. They're, they're trying to work him pick. as a center. We'll see. Well, <laughs> here's, here's, here's. Go ahead, Pat. <laughs> Here's the, I think he's a center, and I think that's where he's going to play. He's a center? Yeah, I think so, yes. He's, he's as much of a center as Alex Galchenyuk is. What? Come on, Pat. Oh Too God. many concussions. In his own end. Are you serious? Galchenyuk, I'm just, much I'm of a center as I'm just, I'm just talking a face-off circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, face-off, just face-off circle. Face, face-off face circle, circle some other thing defensively, okay? the, on the defensive end of the ice. Have you seen Galchenyuk try to play defense? He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know where he is. He, no, he's, he doesn't. He's just... You know, he's just not there, George. And, and if you think Claude Julien is going to just let that slide, he's not going to. I got a feeling he's, I have got a feeling he's going to be back and forward. He's going to be back on the wing. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, where he's, that's where he's best. Okay, I got to cut you all off. That's our show for today. Great show. I want to thank <laughs> everyone for showing up to play. Pat Hickey, George LaRock, Chris Nyland. We'll be back next Thursday as per usual. Let us know what you think about today's topics. Like the video and share it and subscribe to us if you haven't already. My name's Adam Susser. I'll see you next week, Habs fans. <laughs>